even though the following morning was stormy and foul, Harry was excited to be playing in the first you British match. You gonna get on your broom? I think they're waiting for you so that they can start. Okay, thank you. <laughs> they're standing? Look how enthusiastic the crowd is in those stands. Looks weak, like Fluttershy yelling, yay, sort of weak. And they have a mix of students from all four houses standing together, even though it's a Ravenclaw tower. You never actually get to play any Quidditch in this game. You only get this one cutscene. I guess they made up for that with riding around on Buckbeak. Why does he turn around in mid-flight and go backwards? Like, <laughs> what? He played brilliantly. Oh no, a hundred RPG sprites. Dementors. Harry came away from the fall without injury, but he resolved to confront his fear of the Dementors. Professor Lupin offered to help him with anti-demento lessons. He asked Lupin about Sirius Black, the man who had been his father's best friend and had betrayed both James and Lily to Voldemort. The professor seemed reluctant to discuss the matter. We'd better get on with your anti-demento lessons, Harry. Now, we obviously can't bring a real Dementor into the castle, so we'll make do with the Boggart. The Boggart will appear as the thing you fear the most, which in your case, Harry, is fear in the form of a Dementor. First, we'll practice... Fucking Christ! There's that J downloader capture thing again. Fuck. I'll put a black rectangle over it since that's less distracting than the flickering message. Uh, I actually intended to find a safe book after Hermione's transfiguration lesson, but didn't expect to be launched into a Quidditch cutscene, so my time on the download would have been fine if not for that. I'm gonna pause recording for a second and take care of this shit. Okay, here we go. Why bother practicing on a boggart if I can do the spell normally with this carnival side attraction? Fantastic. Three perfect casts, Harry. You're ready for the next stage of the lesson. Explore the surrounding chambers and be ready to use the Patronus charm on a boggart. At least this is a game where you can be reasonably sure that there's not going to be any jump scares. The only thing remotely close to that was Peeves in episode 3, and that wasn't so bad. That's cool, I can open that twice at least. So the first time the cabinet closed, that indicated that it was ready to be opened and dispense beans again, but the second time it closed, it wouldn't do anything. Why not just leave the doors open instead of giving me a split second of hope that I can get even more rewards? I know that's some pretty minor shit, but still. And the chest, at least, had the courtesy of remaining open when it was finished. Okay, there's probably nothing else to do here. What was the point of those side chambers if you don't encounter anything in there? The lesson doesn't throw a boggart at you until you walk past them and into this room. No, Harry, concentrate. The Boggart has taken the shape of a Dementor to play on your fears. This charm symbol sort of looks like a recycling symbol that's only two-thirds complete. When there is more than one Dementor, or in this case, Boggart, the creature's presence will likely keep it. Cast a perfect Patronus at a Boggart to disable it. Temporarily. Make perfect Patronus at each Boggart in the area before the spell has time to wear off, to defeat the creatures. Expect them to 
Well, this game makes Harry's attempts at facing these things seem effortless. He seems perfectly cheerful right now. Although maybe a Boggart doesn't suck the happiness out of you like a real Dementor would. Whoa! What the shitting fuck? Oh, for God's sake, really? Please forgive the trapdoor and so forth. It was necessary to see how you do if the Dementors took you by surprise. You did brilliantly. Thank you, Professor Lupin. Still a dick move, though. After the anti-Dementor lesson, Harry asked Professor Lupin if it was true that Sirius Black and Harry's father... I'm pretty sure the pendulum for that clock isn't attached to anything. But then again, maybe it's just magically suspended anyway, so I don't know. Sirius once, or thought he did. What the fuck is the student on the far left doing? I mean, it's not a funny situation, but I just love the way he yells. I just heard they're going to execute Bugbeak because he attacked Malfoy. No, they can't. This is all Malfoy's doing. He's the one who wants to be punished. There must be something we can do. Hey, and Harry's feel, face is up here. Feel, He's not a reply it. girl or something. Sure and even though Hermione's an actual girl, she's got a better it's shot that cuts off less of the top of her head. Well, I've had it with that monstrous cat of yours, Hermione. I wonder where Madame Pintz is. Maybe Crookshank's got her too. <laughs> she let us look at those books on hippogriff baiting. It's an emergency. It kept in that legal section over there, but it's locked up. There must be some other way to get up there. All right, but let's just try and do this without getting into trouble. Trouble? Who says we'll get into trouble? Oh, good job, Ron. Releasing violent books into the air. All right, Harry, get those. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, I spit on the screen, damn. Where are the other books coming from? Ron didn't even do anything that time. Seriously, why even have these more dangerous books in an easily accessible part of the library while the legal section remains locked up? See if you can find a way to get us up to that legal section, Ron. Right! Yeah, of course a Carpe Retractum statue just magically appears. Well, of course it would appear magically, but... Eh, never mind. It's interesting how even though Ron only touched the chocolate frogs, it healed all three characters anyways. Hello. Harry's standing there like, What the fuck are you doing? How's this getting us up to the legal section? Hermione doesn't even care. Just wrecking some more shit. Jesus, did Ron just physically whip the suit of armor with his wand that time? Okay, I think we're ready. Well, now let me check one more time. Okay, I should finally be finished now. Of course, the table conveniently rises up underneath your feet, Ron. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted you to do, Ron. I wonder if Alahamora could unzip someone's pant zipper. Then again, I don't want a wand pointed at my crotch ever. Who knows what could happen. Could you at least point your wand in the correct fucking direction the next time you cast a spell? We'll shout if Madame Pince shows up. I'm pretty sure shouting would alert Madame Pince to Hermione's presence. And yeah, I know it's just a saying, but do you really have 
any way of covertly talking to Hermione while she's in a separate room. I didn't even touch the save book that time, I just walked right under it. So do those books that made up part of the Lumos wall just not exist until the spell wears off? I wonder if I can just run past these guys and bypass the stupid fight. Guess not, the music's still playing. It's pretty stupid how certain gameplay rules were changed, such as you have to fight imps now. Creatures don't just suddenly become immune to a spell over a single summer, right? But since we can't use Flipendo anymore, we just blow them up with wizard crackers, which I'm not even sure if that kills them or if the explosions just teleports them elsewhere. It's also pretty weird blowing these creatures up this way while you're playing as Hermione, given that in the book she started up a whole organization for elf rights. And I realize imps aren't the same, but you'd think she would at least hesitate to wage jihad against these fuckers if they even have a little bit of consciousness as living beings. Of course, the one book you need on the obscure subject of hippogriff baiting would be stored by itself on a pedestal instead of being side by side along other books on a normal fucking bookshelf. There's the book! Perfect! Now straight to Hagrid's. Did you find anything that could help us with Buckbeak's defense? Yes! And I've already dropped the book off at Hagrid's! Hang on. How'd you do that? We only just left you. Well, um, I took a shortcut. Come on, we don't want to be late for charms class. It's right over there. Eee! Get these horrid things away from me! Run! It's completely bad! Oh no! Maybe we better have a My look. My god, what's with these camera yeah, shots cutting off their foreheads? This is fucked I up. We have time to teach that thing a lesson. Whatever it is. It's up to you, Harry. Uh, I don't feel like doing either of those things right now. Although I guess I can break open another treasure chest. What, that didn't count? You saw the class, aren't you? It's on the second floor, right? Of course it is. Silly me. See you up there. You're literally already on the second floor alongside- And he's just walking away from the classroom, too! What the fuck? Password from Fred and George's shop to see what's behind this portrait. <sighs> I'll deal with that later, Hermione. How is knocking over suits of armor like this not against the school rules anyways? I guess it's allowed or else they wouldn't hide beans in a lot of them. Yeah, I know. At some point I'll quit since I don't feel like doing charms class at the moment, but running around and getting more beans? Yeah, I'll always have time for that. Even though it's one of the least interesting things I could possibly be doing right now. I know I don't even need the chocolate frog, but I just instinctively grab items when I see them. Not sure what I thought that would accomplish that I hadn't already done. <sighs> Alright, enough fooling around for real though. <laughs> <laughs> 